Hello dear students. Today we will be beginning with the second chapter of our textbook The Lost Spring written by Anise Chung. What does the title mean? What do we mean by lost spring? What is the meaning of spring over here? Does, does this title has something else to say? Is there a hidden message in the title? Yes, my dear students. The title itself is a metaphor where the word spring denotes childhood. Childhood, which is the most beautiful and the most happiest part of human life. It is not only the part in which a human being enjoys have fun but also it is the phase of learning of educating of grooming and becoming a better being as spring is a season of growth and flowering similarly childhood is a phase of grooming of development and of becoming something better the title lost spring talks about lost childhood it basically talks about those children who are involved in child labor rather than enjoying their lives rather than having fun they have to carry the burden of responsibilities rather than going to school they are sent to work to earn livelihood for their families as child labor is very cheap so children are the easy victim of easy labor it talks about the loss of innocence and essence of a beautiful life the narrator has told us three different stories the stories of three different children who somehow have lost their childhood because they are bearing the burden of responsibilities who have lost the innocence of their childhood because they have lots and lots of duties the first story is of sahibe alam a beautiful name indeed what does the name mean sahib e alam means lord of the universe the name itself has an irony on one hand where the name means lord of the universe this small little child is not even the lord of his own wishes he wishes to go to school he wishes to wear shoes he wishes to find something gold something precious while searching in garbage but does he get so no sahibe alam is basically a rag picker who carries his rag every morning searching into the garbage dumps for something expensive for something which can cost and help his family to earn money sahibe alam and his family like other families of simapuri were refugees from dhaka due to natural calamity they had to leave bangladesh and they have to take shelter in india they resided at a small little place named as simapuri on the outskirts of delhi which was far far away from the routine life of delhi bereaved of basic amenities and facilities these people were living their lives only and only on rag picking rag picking had different meaning for elders and for kids on one hand 
the elders took it as a mode of livelihood whereas for kids it was fun it was like treasure hunt every day the entire gang of these rag picking children used to enjoy while searching things into garbage dump it was like hunting for treasure at times they used to get expensive things like either small coins or something which by mistake was lost something expensive something which could give them money and it brought them lots and lots of fun being rag picker sahib e alam was carefree he was away from responsibilities and duties he was not duty bound not time bound he was free to work on his will whenever he wanted there was no time limit when anish chung met these boys she saw that these boys were usually bare feet they did not wear shoes when she asked they said it is not so that they do not have shoes they do get shoes at arms or when the people discard their good enough shoes they pick them from garbage but their parents don't allow them to wear shoes because the greedy parents think that if these small little children will roam bare feet they will gain sympathy they can beg for more arms so these kids were forced to roam about bare feet only and only in greed of more money listening to them anish jung remembered a story of udipi pandit she narrates once upon a time there was an udipi pandit who was poor and shoeless whenever he used to see row of shoes outside the temple he used to dream of his children wearing shoes he always and always prayed that may god bless his children with the facilities that he was not able to get as the time passed the pandit was able enough to give facilities to his children the children not only attained education but also were able to get necessary facilities on one hand where udipi pandit wanted his children to wear shoes the parents of these rag picking children kept their own kids without shoes so that they can get more anish chung ends this story with an irony she says that after few months when she returns to delhi and she meets sahib e alam there was a huge difference till now sahib e alam was no more a rag picker rather he worked as a service boy in a tea stall instead of rag bag now he carried canister in one hand and tray of glasses in another the carefree look the fun the smile was all gone as a rag picker sahib was happy he enjoyed his childhood it was only that he was not able to earn more he was not able to give money to his family but he was happy becoming a service boy he became a care worm he had to care about his family he was time bound he got a uniform to wear he had to be neat clean presentable and he used to work the entire day the happiness was all gone the tiredness could be seen on his face he became suppressed there was no enjoyment though 
he was getting a monthly salary of rupees 800 along with his meals so the first story tells us how sahib e alam lost his enjoyment lost his fun and ended up serving for his family so here we see the major features how the narrator interacted with sahib e alam who was a resident of simapuri sahib was a rag picker he was carefree happy and enjoyed childhood later on when he became an employee in a tea shop he became a careworm he was unhappy and tired suppressed and he had no enjoyment meaning of garbage for children it was wrapped in wonders for adults it was merely a means of survival in this story the basic issues that are raised are child labor and exploitation in the name of tradition the second story is of a small little boy mukesh who belonged to ferozabad his family was involved into the traditional occupation of glass bangle making mukesh had different dreams he dreamt to drive a car he wanted to become a motor mechanic he wanted to work on his own but the family traditions spoke something else he had to work in glass bangle making industry at this time he was happy because according to him he was earning money for his family but deep in his heart he knew that his dream was difficult to be fulfilled in the family of mukesh he had his father who had almost lost his eye due to the glass dust working endlessly into the glass making industry generally people used to lose their eyesight his elder brother who like him was working in the bangle making industry and the brother's wife a small little girl young and wailed she was too small for her age but still looking after the entire families and fulfilling all the duties and responsibilities mukesh when met anish chang he was happy to show her that he and his brother were able to renovate their house but will he actually be able to fulfill his dream still remains a question the story also includes a small little girl savita of ferozabad even her family was involved into glass bangle making what was bangle making according to her for her bangle making was only and only the mode of livelihood and earning money even being a girl she did not know the importance of bangles she only knew that these were colorful pieces of glass which brought money and food to her family unlike every other family even her family was following the tradition of bangle making issues raised in the story of mukesh are exploitation and ill treatment for cheap child labor working in the glass bangle making industry is prohibited for children below 14 years but is that so no small children are easy to find and they 
work for very little money so these children are forced to work in this kind of furnace in these kind of furnaces where the temperature is high and the risk of their life is more the second point is the issue of the vicious circle of middlemen sahukars policemen and politicians all these families the poor families they were not very well known about the banking system or taking loans from the government agencies for them the middlemen and sahukars were easily available but these middlemen and sahukars used to cheat upon these poor fellows and their circle of debt became a never ending cycle the families in ferozabad had to follow tradition therefore the family tradition and the vicious circle it kept the perpetual trap or the cobweb of never ending debts the debt taken by one person was carried to further many generations and yet it was left it also talks about corruption corruption by those who are in power and position like the policemen and politicians who should help these people who are poor who are needy but is that so no they helped the rich people those middlemen and sahukars and exploited these poor people nobody from the family of ferozabad dared to dream out of the family tradition for them working in the glass spangle making industry was their destiny whether they live they die they lose their eyesight or anything else but they were destined to work in this condition in these circumstances anish chang was happy to meet mukesh and to see that he was thinking out of the box because he was dreaming to learn how to drive he was dreaming to become a motor mechanic was this possible for him it still remains a question we have some points to remember dear children when we talk about this chapter we have two basic parts the first part talks about the condition of seema puri and the second part talks about the condition of ferozabad seema puri where the narrator meets sahib alam the boy sahib alam where the name means the lord of universe lives in seema puri on the on the outskirts of delhi he was a refugee from bangladesh he does rag picking for his survival he lives in miserable unhygienic conditions bangladesh refugees have been living in seema puri since 1971 they are living here without any permit but with ration cards who allow them to give votes so they were basically the vote banks for politicians rag picking has gradually acquired the proportion the proportion of a fine art sometimes it brings them coins a 10 rupee note and even some valuable surprises on her next encounter the author comes across saheb as an employee in a tea stall doing hard work now the carefree look of saheb has been replaced by worries and anxieties on his face the second part talks about ferozabad about a small child mukesh 
who was living in Firozabad. He was employed in the family business of making bangles. He was ambitious to become a motor mechanic. His grandmother considers bangle making to be God-given lineage owing to their caste and tradition. Savita, a small little girl, was also engaged in bangle making. She did not understand the importance of bangles in Indian society. This story talks about those people who are engaged in bangle making, who lose their eyesight owing to the glass dust. Their working conditions are very tough. They are ill-treated, ill-fed and ill-bought up for want of money. They fail to organize themselves into a cooperative as they are in the trap of a vicious circle of middlemen, sahukars, policemen and politicians. There were some young people who wanted to open up their own business, a small little shop or some other work. But then these middlemen and sahukars exploited them and they were forced to return back to the business of bangle making. Their family tradition and the vicious circle kept them in this perpetual trap. Mukesh dreams big but lack of resources such as money, education etc. put a check on his dreams. Will he be able to pursue his dreams? Depends on his own willpower to move out of the box. So dear students, after this, go through the entire chapter, read it thoroughly and answer these questions. What does the name sahib alam mean? Bring out the irony. Why does Mukesh want to become a motor mechanic? Does Savita understand the importance of bangles? What keeps bangle makers in trap? Mention the hazards of working in bangle industry. Why should child labor be eliminated and how? Dear students, do your work properly and note everything down in your registers. Thank you. I hope I made your learning easy. Keep connected.